150 years after the Apollo lunar mission, NASA has finally launched its new moon rocket, Artemis. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis 1. We the rocket lifted off from Cape Canaveral on a test flight to send its Orion capsule around the moon and back. For now, without astronauts, technical problems had postponed the launch several times. The Artemis 1 rocket is the most powerful ever built. It brings the US a step closer to putting astronauts back on the moon, which it aims to do by 2025. And joining us from Cologne, Germany, is DW's Zulfika Abani. OK, we heard about the various problems and delays, uh, but this must now be a, a huge relief for NASA. It is indeed a relief because we are talking about a couple of months that this rocket has been in or on the launch pad and off the launch pad. It survived hurricanes and all these fuel leaks and... There is, there was a sense of sort of like you know reputation damage along the way, but this is this is hugely successful. Not only because of the American technology and hardware, it's an American rocket, um, also with a, a European built uh, um, service module that's part of the Orion spacecraft where astronauts will sit. It's really big, and of course. The, 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 so the launch window was closing because there's a secondary uh, payload, as they call it, on the on the rocket with um, um, CubeSats, very small satellites, and they have their batteries that they need for you know for operational purposes. And it was there was a lot of sort of like, there were a lot of unknowns in there. So for a number of reasons, and specifically geopolit geopolitically, it's so hard to not think about what's going on in other parts of the world when you hear people talking about rockets flying overhead and then thinking about the Artemis rocket. It's the same technology, really. It's a huge significance geopolitically as well as technologically and for science and for space travel and everything like that. So, yeah, yeah. it's huge and they will be relieved. And being used for something uh, very different here. Uh, but tell us, uh, how is this going to uh, develop as far as what's expected from the moon? It's being used as a launch pad, isn't it, to... Uh, go further into space and, and visit places like Mars. That is, that's absolutely right. So, the, I mean, in the first instance, if, if it's possible to get astronauts back onto the moon, uh, and even before that, there'll be sort of like robotic experiments. We want to set up a base on the moon um, to see whether there are resources that we can take from the moon. Um, so there'll be a, uh, an experiment to drill for, for ice, to see if there's ice below the surface. That's, of course, important because ice means water. We need water to live. Ice means oxygen. We need oxygen to breathe. Um, then you can build up a, a base there. But of course, you also want to be able to, well, people in the space community want to be able to travel beyond the moon to Mars. And they're already talking about beyond Mars, so into deep, deep space. Um, this is all sort of years and years and years down the track um, because we're still, you know, trying to get a rocket off the ground or we've just it's just been done now. The SLS managed to launch um, from Florida. Um, but um, it's, you know, there are some huge ambitious plans out there and why we want to do it. At the moment, people are saying it's for science and for discovery and, and, and that sort of thing. But really, we are talking about, again, about um, domination of this new domain that is uh, that is space. And, and 50 years after Apollo, that is hugely successful. And Zuli, there uh, is a uh, space significant. race going on. Um, uh, there are huge efforts by China, uh, India and many more countries. You're absolutely right. I mean, um, China um, has its own ambitions for the moon um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, space base as well. China was the first to land on the, the so-called um, far side of the moon, what we, what we call the dark side of the moon colloquially, simply because we can't see it, but it's the far side of the moon um, space station. Uh, there are huge questions over the future of the International Space Station. Of course, there we have, you know, the so-called Western countries like America, Europe, Japan, and then Russia. Russia's already said it sees no future for the International Space Station after 2024. So therefore, the date of 2025, one year later, for Artemis III to get astronauts onto the moon, very uh, significant. But you've got also other smaller players, Israel, the UAE, um, many other countries, and as you said, India, getting in on the space game, they all 
see new industries, and of course, very important for industries on Earth, but also just for this sense of domination. It's this uh, 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 an opportunity to show that you are a big power and can speak in, in world terms. And so there is that space race, undoubtedly, at this moment. But America has taken its first step to take the lead right now. Sofiko Abani, thank you very much for putting all that into perspective. DW Science.